Live Not by Lies, a manual for Christian dissidents by Rod Dreher. Introduction. There always is this fallacious belief. It would not be the same here. Here such things are impossible. Alas, all the evil of the 20th century is possible everywhere on earth. Alexander S. In 1989, the Berlin Wall fell and with it, Soviet totalitarianism. Gone was the communist police state that had enslaved Russia and half of Europe. The Cold War that had dominated the second half of the 20th century came to a close. Democracy and capitalism bloomed in the formerly captive nations. The age of to totalitarianism passed into oblivion, never again to menace humanity, or so the story goes. I, along with most Americans, believed that the menace of totalitarianism had passed. Then, in the spring of 2015, I received a phone call from an anxious stranger. The caller was an eminent American physician. He told me that his elderly mother, a Czechoslovak immigrant to the United States, had spent six years of her youth as a political prisoner in her homeland. She had been part of the Catholic anti-communist resistance. Now, in her 90s, and living with her son and his family, the old woman had recently told her American son that events in the United States today remind her of when communism first came to Czechoslovakia. What prompted her concern? News reports about the social, news reports about the social media mob frenzy against a small town Indiana p pizzeria whose evangelical Christian owners told a reporter that they would not cater a same-sex wedding. So overwhelming were the threats against their lives and property, including a user on Twitter's social media platform who tweeted a call for people to burn down the pizzeria, that the restaurant owners closed their doors for a time. Meanwhile, liberal elites, especially in the media, normally so watchful against the dangers of mobs threatening the lives and livelihoods of minorities, were untroubled by the assault on the pizzeria, which occurred in the context of the broader debate about the clash between gay rights and religious liberty. A U.S.-born doctor said he had heard his immigrant parents warn him about the dangers of totalitarianism all his life. He hadn't worried. After all, this is America, the land of liberty, of individual rights, one nation under God, and the rule of law. America was born out of a quest for religious liberty and had always been proud of its first American, excuse me, and had always been proud of his first amendment to the U.S. Constitution that guaranteed it. But now, there was something about what was happening to Indiana that made him think, what if they were right? It's easy to laugh this kind of thing off. Many of us with aging parents are accustomed to having to talk them down from the ledge, so to speak, after a cable news program stoked their fear and anxiety about the world outside their front door. I assumed that this was probably the case with this elderly Czech woman. But there was something about the tension in the doctor's voice and the fact that he felt compelled to reach out to a journalist he didn't even know, telling me that it would be too dangerous for him to use his name if I wrote about him. That rattled me. His question became my question. What if the old Czech woman sees something the rest of us do not? What if we really are witnessing a turn toward totalitarianism in the Western liberal democracies and can't see it because it takes a different form from the old kind? During the next few years, I spoke with many men and women who had once lived under communism. I asked them what they thought of the old woman's declaration. Did they also think that life in America is drifting towards some sort of totalitarianism? They all said yes, often emphatically. They were usually surprised by my question because they consider Americans to be hopelessly naive on the subject. In talking at length to some of the emigrants who found refuge in America, I discovered they are genuinely angry that their fellow Americans don't recognize what is happening. What makes the emerging situation in the West similar to what they fled? After all, 
Every society has rules and taboos and mechanisms to enforce them. What unnerves those who lived under Soviet communism is this similarity. Elites and elite institutions are abandoning old-fashioned liberalism based in defending the rights of the individual and replacing with a progressive creed that regards justice in terms of groups. It encourages people to identify with groups, ethnic, sexual, and otherwise, and to think of good and evil as a matter of power dynamics among groups. A utopian vision drives these progressives, one that compels them to seek to rewrite history and to reinvent language to reflect their ideals of social justice. Further, these utopian utopian pro progressives are constantly changing the standards of thought, speech, and behavior. You can never be sure when those in power will come after you as a villain for having said or done something that was perfectly fine the day before. And the consequences for violating the new taboos are extreme, including losing your livelihood and having your reputation ruined forever. People are becoming instant pariahs for having expressed a political, politically incorrect opinion or in some other way provoking a progressive mob, which amplifies which amplifies its scapegoating through social and conventional media under the guise of diversity, inclusivity, in inclusivity and equity, and other egalitarian jargon. The left creates powerful mechanisms for controlling thought and discourse and marginalizing dissenters as evil. It is very hard for Americans who have never lived through this kind of ideological fog to recognize what is happening. To be sure, whatever it is, it is not a carbon copy of the life of the so Soviet bloc nations with their secret police, their gulags, their strict censorship, and their material deprivation. This is precisely the problem these immigrants warn. The fact that relative to so Soviet bloc conditions, life in the West remains so free and so prosperous is what blinds Americans to the mounting threat to our liberty. That and the way that, and the way that those take away our freedom couch, oh wait, that, that and the way those who take away freedom couch it in the language of liberating victims from oppression. I was born and raised in, so in the Soviet Union, and I'm frankly stunned by how similar some of these developments are to the way Soviet propaganda operated, says one professor, professor now living in the Midwest. Another emigre professor from this one from Czechoslovakia was equally, equally blunt. He told me that he began noticing a shift a decade or so ago. Friends would lower their voices and look over their shoulders when expressing conservative views. When he expressed his conservative beliefs in a normal tone of voice, the Americans would start to fidget and constantly scan the room to see who might be listening. I grew up like this, he tells me, but it was not supposed to be happening here. What is happening here? A progressive and profoundly anti-Christian militancy is steadily overtaking society one described by Pope Benedict the 16th as a worldwide dictatorship of seemingly humanistic ideologies that pushes dissenters to society's margins. Benedict calls this manifestation of spiritual power of the Antichrist. This spiritual power takes material form in government and private institutions and corporations in academia and media, and in the changing practices of everyday American life. It is empowered by unprecedented te technological capabilities to surveil private life. There is virtually nowhere left to hide. The old, hard to totalitarianism had a vision for the world that was required, that required the eradication of Christianity. The new soft totalitarianism does too, and we are not equipped to resist its sneakier attack. As we know, communism was militantly atheistic and declared religion to be its mortal enemy. The Soviets and the European allies murdered clergy and cast an uncounted number of believers, both ordained and lay, into prisons and work camps. 
where many suffered torture. Today, the Western world has become post-Christian, with large numbers of those born in after 1980 rejecting religious faith. This means that they not only oppose Christians when we stand up for our principles, in particular in defense of the traditional family of male and female gender roles and of the sanctity of human life, but also they will not even understand why they should tolerate dissent based in religious belief. Oh, wow, yeah, I'm not going to read any more of this, guys. This is just amazing. This is going to be a great book, great buy, great pickup. Um, you know, God bless and keep you all. Links are in the description. Uh, you'll be able to find uh, the book and the best price that we can find on it. And yeah, God bless you all and have a great day.